Hey, what's going on? Um, okay, today we're talking about the reasons that you should not move to Windsor, Ontario. Um, you might be thinking about coming here because there's a lot of great reasons to come here. Like, I'll be honest, like, uh, it's a, a, an affordable city. You've got Detroit right there, so you still get all these major city amenities. Um, uh, lots of great people that live here. Like, it can be a good city, but I wouldn't want you to move here and then be upset with your choice. So we're going to go over five reasons why you should not move to Windsor, okay? And if you can handle these things, great, come on down. Uh, if you can't, maybe look elsewhere, okay? So let's dive in here. Oh, by the way, my name is Ryan. I'm a, I'm a real estate agent and real estate appraiser here in Windsor. I know everything there is to know about buying a house and selling a house in the Windsor area. Um, if you need my help and you're coming to town, feel free to reach out. People reach out to me from YouTube literally all the time. And um, I like it. It's fun. So, uh, yeah, my number is on the screen. It's also down below in the description. Also, click like on this video. It helps me a buttload. Okay? Let's dive in. Okay, number one is fish flies. Okay? Fish flies are freaking nasty. You might not know what they are. Like, I don't, I've, I'd never heard of them until I moved down here. They come out of the lakes, so maybe if you live way up north near a lot of lakes, maybe you see them, but uh, it wasn't until I moved down to Windsor that I came onto fish flies, okay? Now, you might call them mayflies. I think people call them mayflies up north. Uh, regardless, they swarm the city for about two weeks every year, and they're gross. Fish flies, also called mayflies, generally emerge in early summer. Living less than 48 hours, they reproduce and die. I think they smell and they're disgusting. They're fine. They don't bug me. The flies on the walls, the roads, and everywhere else. So it's usually late June to early mid-July that these things exist. Um, they come out of the water and then they only come out like in the evening. And then they fly towards light, and then they just swarm underneath that light, and they only live 24 hours. So by the morning, they're all dead. And you just have this pile of fish flies sitting there underneath the light that you left on. It's disgusting. So I remember I used to live um, near the water, and there was this pizza, it was Domino's, Domino's Pizza, near the water. And of course, they have their open sign on, and the, and the lights, and every night... It would just swarm, like, the, you couldn't see in the window. It was all just black with fish flies. And then by the morning, they would all die. So you'd see the guy that works there in the morning taking a snow shovel and just shoveling big chunks, hunks of, of dead fish flies out of the way so people could come into the restaurant. Freaking gross, man. Seriously. There's also a gas station that was near that place, too. And and normally what you'll see is the gas stations will turn off all the lights. Like, you know, you pull up to the gas pump at night, and you have that overhead thing, and all the lights are on, and it's nice and bright. They usually turn that off. Because if not, and they forgot one day, uh, it just gets swarmed with fish flies, and no one will pump gas because your white gas pump is now black with fish flies. And that, my friends, is disgusting. Okay, and they're really stupid too, by the way. So they have no brain, <laughs> um, and you can't repel them. That's why there's no repellent, right? Because if you could repel that, you somebody would invent it. But I've watched fish flies f fly into a fire because they were attracted to the light, not realizing it would kill them. That's how dumb they are. You can't repel something that has no fear of death because of stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's really no answer for two weeks out of the year. You're maybe three weeks You're just gonna have to deal with the fish flies the best way to deal with them is to turn off the lights Okay, and and I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm being over dramatic here because I don't like them. They're gross, but um Like if you live in South Windsor or Devonshire Heights or, or, you know, parts of Tecumseh. Like, you're not going to have to deal with them at all, really, because they're not going to make it that far. It's only the stuff that's near the water. In fact, you see Tecumseh Road here? Anything south of Tecumseh Road, I don't really think you have to deal with fish flies at all. It's just the stuff near the water. Um, so that's not too bad. But it's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to move to this area, um, you're going to have to deal with fish flies for three weeks out of the year. Okay, number two, the humidity, okay, uh, and the heat. Listen, I, I, I don't want to over, I don't want to be dramatic. Like, it's not Florida. I get that. But there is a definite difference between Windsor in terms of humidity and heat than there is in central Ontario, in the GTA, 
up north. Like here, for example, this is my uh, app on my phone that shows me the weather. I took this the other day, okay? Uh, 27 degrees in Windsor, 23 in Toronto. Okay, 4 degrees might not sound like a big deal, but it actually is. That's a huge difference between a 23 degree day and a 27 degree day. By the way, that also means when it's a really hot day... You know, it might be 29 in Toronto and it's 33 in Windsor. You're going to feel that. And there's going to be more humidity. And some of you might not mind that. Like, I got a buddy who just moved to Florida. He loves the humidity. He loves the heat. Good for him. I don't. <laughs> I hate it, to be honest with you. Um, but that's just something you got to deal with. I remember when I lived way up north in Timmins, Ontario, there was a co-worker who was quite a bit older. And he told me when he was in his early 20s, he moved down from Timmins into Windsor. But he didn't like the humidity. In fact, he moved back because that's a dramatic, dramatic difference, right? Because in Timmins, there's not really humidity. The warmest it gets is 27 degrees. It's usually like 23. And then he moves down here. It's like 35 a lot of the time in the summer and super humid. So there can be a big difference, right? If there's a four degree difference between Windsor and Toronto, there's going to be a bigger difference between Windsor and Sudbury or Ottawa or, or, out west or wherever you might be coming from. It's going to be warm here. You might like it. You might hate it. It's just something you have to deal with in winter. It's going to be warm. It's going to be hot all summer long. In fact, I would say summer really lasts between, uh, I would say, May and the end of September. Like, you're still getting 30-degree weather in September in Windsor. It's really not until you get to October that it starts to cool down. Again, you might love that. That might sound like an awesome thing for you. But if you're like me and you like the cold, cooler weather, um, if you feel uncomfortable in the heat and humidity, uh, just keep in mind that's something you got to deal with in Windsor. Okay, next up, boring landscape. Seriously. So um, you got to realize it's just flat and cornfields here. It's pretty much Saskatchewan, but of Ontario. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and we also don't get much snow. So if you're somebody who loves to go skiing, you will not be skiing in Windsor. There's, I mean, you got to drive to London to get to a bunny hill. There's nothing around here that's going to let you ski. And like I said, snow? There's maybe like a couple weeks in January where we have like a foot of snow on the ground, but... Usually, if it's snowing, it's going to melt the next morning. You don't have to do much in terms of snow. I'm telling you right now. Um, yeah, there's no hills. There's nothing. Like, I like hiking. I got to go out west to do that. I take vacations out west. It's just not going to happen in this area. Uh, mountain biking is another one. Okay, so we have something here called Ojibwe Nature Center. It's like this forest, and they have walking trails through there. And then there's also biking trails, which is kind of cool. Somebody came along, and they kind of landscaped the biking trails into, like, mountain biking trails. Like, there was some elevation, there was some ramps, there was some, like, it went sideways, you could go really fast around the corner, and the city came along and took it out. They just, like, turned it back into flat, boring path. Why? They're lame, I guess. I think it's city land, and they were worried about liability, somebody could get injured, which, you know, grow up. We're adults, okay? Leave us alone. But, um... They, so there's not even that. Like, there's no hills, and when someone went and made made some fun mountain biking path, they got rid of it. So you can bike. There's a lot of speed bikers in this area, a lot of people that love to bike long distance and stuff like that, but you're just not going to be mountain biking really in this area. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think. Like The only other thing is, like, uh, the Malden Park like trail system there where there's kind of some elevation, but it's not true mountain biking. It's not the same. So yeah, hiking, skiing, snowmobiling, uh, mountain biking, it's just not going to happen in this region. But what we do have is we do have the Great Lakes. So you can go boating. There's lots of, oh man, sailboating is big around here. In the summers, as the sun's setting, you can go out towards Lake St. Clair and you just see all these sailboats along the horizon as the sun is setting. It's pretty cool. Um, Motorboating, uh, kayaking, stand-up paddleboarding, all that stuff can be done in this area. And fishing is really big as well. People love to fish in this area. You could do it right off the boardwalk there uh, along the, the Detroit River or out in Lake St. Clair. Lots of people do it. Or you can get out in your boat. You can go. There's, some, there's like the kayak fishermen too. They get in the kayak made for fishing and they go way out there. Um, so there's that stuff, but there's just no elevation. And if you're driving, I've said this in another video, if you're driving to Toronto, <laughs> it's going to be a boring drive. It's just cornfields and windmills. That's it. Okay, next one is construction. 
And listen, I get it. Everybody jokes that their city has the worst, like, potholes and there's always construction. But Windsor seriously has a weird fetish with road work, okay? So this road right here is called the EC Row Expressway. It can, it, you know, you can go 120 kilometers an hour on there without getting pulled over. Um, you can go across the city in a few minutes. It's great. Except for every freaking summer, um, they bring it down to one lane and they're doing road work. And I don't get it, because it seems like it's the same spot every year. Like, what did you pave it with last year? No-name brand asphalt? Jello brand asphalt? Like, what, what is happening here? How are you doing road work again on the EC Row Expressway? It's nuts. In fact, it's one of the most expensive roads in all of Ontario. Um, the city spends $4 million every single year maintaining the EC Row Expressway. Except this year, they're spending $10 because they're repaving this section right here. It's gotten so expensive that our, our mayor is begging the province for money or to take some responsibility for the EC Row Expressway. But of course, the province is like, no. Too bad. And as you can imagine, when you take the EC Row Expressway and you bring it down to one lane, a lot of the people that would be driving on it choose to take a different route, which means the city streets get a little more packed while... Um, well, that construction's going on. Now, listen, again, if you're coming from, like, the GTA or even Kitchener or wherever, um, you're used to congestion. It's, this is probably nothing compared to what you're used to, but I hate it. I just want to go. Like, get out of my way. I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive fast. Move. Okay? And so when you get to construction, it's really frustrating. Um, it's not the end of the world, but... It's just something you got to deal with here is in the summer, again, they're going to shut down the EC row and they're going to do like clockwork every single year. They're going to be doing road work. Okay, last but not least, um, it's not a major city. Like, Windsor's just not. And although I've said before, like, we do have a major city right there. It's called Detroit and it's awesome. And you can go there and you can catch major league baseball, hockey, football, major concerts, like the biggest acts in the world come to Detroit. There's huge, massive malls. That's true. And that's, that's a benefit. But it is on the other side of an international border which means you have to pay $6 toll each way to get there, plus the gas, you're going to be driving for, you know, 20 minutes to the sports, 40 minutes if you want to get to the big malls and stuff like that, or, or more. Um, you know, it's not quite as convenient as being in the exact same city. Like, if you're somebody who needs the hustle and bustle of downtown Toronto, don't come to Windsor. You're not going to like it here. It's just not for you. If you, if you love going clubbing <laughs> in these huge, great, you know, Toronto clubs. We're not a town where there's clubbing. Like, there's a couple clubs, but it's just university students getting liquored up. Like, it's not it's not going to be fun for you. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to really say because Toronto, I mean, yeah, you got the Leafs and you got all that stuff, but we do have that. It is Detroit. But like I said, if COVID hits like it did, um, you're not going over there for two years. You know, there, there are families in Windsor who have family in Detroit who could not see them for two years because uh, Mr. Trudeau there shut us all down, okay? So just be aware of that. You you do have a big city, but you do have to pay, you know, total $12 toll to get there plus the gas, and uh, it's over an international border. So if you don't have a passport or if you, uh, you get arrested and not pardoned and they don't want to let you over or, or whatever, uh, you're not going to be able to use that. You're not going to be able to use the big city amenities. Um... Windsor is a smaller city. We're 300, I mean, what are we now? 400,000 people um, in, in, in the greater Windsor area. Um, it's not Toronto, but it's a great city. So that's it. That's, those, those are the five things, okay? Do you think you can deal with those? Is Windsor a place that you think you could live in and be happy? Um, because it's really just those, those, other than what I just mentioned, it's a great city, honestly. You have great schools, there's great people. You do have Detroit there you can use for major market stuff. And um, I don't know, man. I, I like it down here. It's just whether you can deal with those five things I just mentioned. So, um, again, my number's on the screen. If uh, you're going to buy a house, come down here. If you need some help figuring out where to invest in Windsor or whatever, whatever your prerogative may be, or maybe even if you just have some questions and you want to talk about Windsor, feel free to give me a call. Um, also, click like, click, click subscribe, and I will see you next time.